Hello and welcome to Rebuilding a Very Old Horizontal Steam Engine. This is part 7, Making a New Crankshaft. Because of the complexity of doing this, I decided to split it into three parts. This is the first part, machining the main shafts. And while I'm doing this, I'm using my bandsaw to cut the crank webs out of a block of steel. So the first thing to do is to part off in the lathe a piece of three quarters of an inch diameter silver steel. I'm using silver steel for this crankshaft for a couple of reasons. One is, it's a ground material and it's dimensionally accurate at exactly three quarters of an inch. And the other reason being that this material is quite hard and wears very well. This kind of steel can be heat treated to make it really hard, but I don't need to do that. You will notice as I'm parting this off in the lathe that I'm using some lubricant. It's just three in one oil and it does the trick and doesn't make much mess. So once I parted off the piece of silver steel, I faced it with a carbide cutter. And here you see the two blanks set either side of the original crank web. Now it's time to get the dimensions from the original crank web and duplicate it with the steel that I cut earlier, starting with cutting the pieces to length. Time now to check some tolerances. This is the original piece of crankshaft and here I'm trying it in the flywheel and it's a very sloppy fit. This is the new piece of three quarter inch diameter silver steel and this seems to be a slightly better fit. In this clip, I'm drilling a center hole in the crankshaft using a center drill. More about this later. Now over to the milling machine. What I'm doing here is using an original piece of the crankshaft, the broken part, just to make sure that the milling cutter is in the center. And then I put in the blank piece and I'm milling a slot for the keyway. This is a very slow, laborious process on my small milling machine. It takes a long time to do and you must not rush it. This is quite a fine cutter. It's slightly smaller than I need because if you use one that's a little bit bigger, it's always going to cut oversize because I'm winding a handle. It's not a computer machine and with the best will in the world, I will wind the handle too fast. The tool will bend and it will cut oversize. So what I'm doing is using a smaller cutter and then I will finally do some passes down either side and we'll end up with it just the right size. Immediately after the cutting process, I'm removing the sharp edges with a needle file, followed by a rub with some 180 grit sandpaper. That way you're less likely to cut your fingers on the parts. When I tried this part on the flywheel, I realized that the keyway slot in the piece was a little bit small. So I put it back in the milling machine and took another cut to make the slot the same size as the one in the flywheel. Over now to the lathe for a bit of routine turning. I must stress at this point that normally for making a crankshaft like this I would use my collet chuck. I have a rather large, very expensive collet chuck, but I'm presuming that a lot of people watching this do not have such a thing. So as you've just seen, in my three-jaw chuck on my little Boxford lathe, which actually is very accurate. I'm checking with a dial test indicator the concentricity of the part in the chuck. Even though the chuck is accurate, it's worth mentioning that the part must not be taken out of the chuck until the final size of the smaller diameter is reached. Don't take it out of the chuck and try it in the work and then put it back because it may not run 100% concentrically. Some chucks are worse than others. This one, luckily, and it really is luck, is very good indeed. One of the main benefits in using a collet chuck is that you can remove the part from the collet chuck and try it on the job. And then if it's not right, put it back in the chuck and it will remain 100% concentric. But this will not be so on most three jaw chucks. I'm purposely taking fine cuts here. I don't want to overstress this part at all. Here I'm speeding up the video because it is a long job as this, it took quite a while and I don't want the part moving or jumping out of the chuck. And you see me going back and forth and you can also see me applying some 3-in-1 oil as a lubricant and frequently checking with the micrometer. And when I get near to the finished size, I try the end part before taking the main cut. This end part is going to be cut off because the whole thing is slightly too long so you can do a quick test with your micrometer before taking the final committed cut and going all the way down. When I was taking the final cut with the lathe tool, I took into consideration the fact that I would be removing a very tiny amount with some emery cloth and some scotch bright before I got a good bearing surface on the part. Here I'm trying the parts on the engine just to illustrate where they go. 
It's very important that the turn parts are exactly half an inch in diameter. More in the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.